Anyway, if you got a few minutes here, we're talking to Lori Sesnick, who um, was part of the Occupy DNC movement this year. And uh, I'm uh, about to ask her a few questions about the interview, about the uh, uh, 2016 election uh, process that's uh, unfolding right now. And the final debate, of course, is tonight. And uh, I think everybody is uh, sitting on the edge of their their seats, so to speak, to see how this uh, sort of transpires. So the first question, uh, Lori, is how closely have you been following the uh, this election in particular, the coming election? Right. So very closely, which is why I ended up starting the Occupy DNC movement several months prior to the DNC because I was uh, pretty upset about the level of uh, election fraud that had been taking place throughout the um, throughout the year. And that's what sort of pushed me to take this further and get tens of thousands of people to the DNC to protest. We ended up getting permits and everything, as you know, to protest down there. And we brought people from all over the country to the DNC to fight against election fraud. Right. And what is it, do you think, that uh, particularly differentiates this election from others uh, in the past, in your opinion? That's a really good question. So a lot of things. Number one, um, most, I think a lot of American people now are more awake than they ever have been. And we have Bernie Sanders to thank for that, who awakened us to a lot of things. I think also socialized media has allowed us to really see what's going on more because we see the discrepancies between what we see and what we post as the average person on social media. So on, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and whatnot, and just amongst ourselves, we see the reality of what's going on and it does not coincide with what we see on mainstream media. So it has really allowed us to understand uh, the level of corruption and collusion between these, these political parties and the media and the elite who, who run in both both parties and own these these mainstream media stations. So we're more awake, and I think mainstream media, the, the discrepancy between mainstream media and socialized media has allowed us to understand that. Bernie has woken us up. And I think also in this election is different in that we're so sick of things that have been going on. So, you know, personally, when they shut down the government, that was pretty bad to me. I think, how can this even happen? It cost us hundreds of billions of dollars just to you know, pick up the tab for the nonsense that's going on, you know, amongst these political parties and just things going on in on, on Earth with the planet, people tired of health care issues in America. So we're fed up and we're more aware and we're seeing the level of problems and we're willing to go out on a limb now to do something about it. So you think there's a there's a high importance placed on voting, obviously. Um so how do you how do you feel about the fact that some people think uh, or there's some, there's been some recent accusations that this particular election might be rigged? Oh, there's no question. That's what got me started on this. There's absolutely no question. And if we had another hour, I would love to speak about uh, the fraud and the shenanigans that we saw at the DNC, because not only. You know, and if anyone wants to read up on the election fraud, they can go to TrustVote.org, which was started by FBI agents and lawyers that have been working on election fraud since the, since around 2000. This is nothing new, and they expected to see it, and they did see it, and the trends have continued. And But beyond, you know, Nevada was a really, really bad, bad example of, of fraud and, and things that happened. But even at the DNC itself, the things that happened were disgusting. They literally turned the lights out on Bernie Sanders supporters in the Wells Fargo Center. So people had signs of prote- you know, protesting against Hillary Clinton and in support of Bernie all the way to the DNC. They little, literally put noisemakers above certain states so those people could not be heard, so a chance could not be heard. They turned the lights out on them. Delegates had to go as far as getting glow-in-the-dark shirts so media could even see them in the stands. The stands were filled with protesters, and the entire time they, lo- they just lied and pretended there was this, you know, everyone was getting along and everyone was in on this, uh, in support of Hillary at this point, which never, ever happened. And in fact, Bernie even won the first roll call. He actually won at the DNC. People don't even know that. Yeah. And then the next day they did a, a new roll call and they, they put it on TV and they just lied their way through this whole thing and then said Hillary won. I mean, the whole and, thing. And as you said, the fact that Obama didn't even uh, back him at a certain point, that was surprising to you as well. 
Oh my gosh, yeah. I've always loved Obama. <laughs> I've always been proud of some of the things that he's done, and that has really done an about face in my mind uh, because, yes, he's been um, backing Hillary. And, you know, you wonder how these things work. You wonder if maybe there was a deal made back at the last election. Maybe the deal was, hey, let me be president this time. You can be president next time. I don't know how these things work, but what's clear is that the elite are calling the shots and they're funding these elections and they're doing everything they can to not get facts out to the public. Yeah, there's Everything a lot of... from not allowing... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. there's a potentially a lot of clandestine sort of uh, stuff at work there. And, and and that leads me to the next question I wanted to ask. Like, obviously, you've been aware of the FBI's investigation of Hillary Clinton for quite some time uh, with Whitewater um, yeah. and the Citizens United uh, versus Hillary Clinton case. What, what do you make of that? Oh, to me, the fact, well, Whitewater, I look at them as sort of separate issues. I'm not sure on the relationship that you're pulling uh, between them and and if there is a tighter relationship. Um, You know, anyway, Whitewater is one thing, and that was, that's a long time ago, not that long ago, but that was a while back. Not that we shouldn't ignore it because it's it's important. Right, but it seems Um, to, it seems to be, you know, a bone of contention with the Republican Party and the fact that uh, they, they, you know, they always want to, uh, you know, say that there's something nefarious going on or, or something sinister within the, in the, uh, the Clinton camp. And I, I'm just trying to get to the bottom of what the FBI may have, may or may not have actually found and and what there is and why why they've been held under such uh, su- such scrutiny. Right. Well, you know what? Because you know Americans generally were forced to try to draw our conclusions by um, putting all the pieces together. Because obviously mainstream media doesn't always help us out a lot, and we have to sort of figure a lot of things out on our own with information and where we find that information and. Um, so your guess is kind of as good as mine, but where I choose to get my my good guesswork is from information from other countries and what they say happened with them. And Haiti was one of them. And if you look at the leader of Haiti, he was saying how millions and millions of dollars that were supposed to go to them were actually stolen by uh, the Hillary Foundation. And so there are, there are a lot of um, people out there who have a lot of things to say about their own experiences with that foundation and... Uh, I'm not sure how much has actually gone to charity. There's a, there's a big question mark there. Where is this money going? And it does appear to look like it's a laundering situation where money from lobbyists can go to them to get to get things done. Right. You know, and and I, and I guess you can say that's similar to Citizens United in that it's allowing monies to go toward the, these um, these elections, which should not be. It should not be happening. So, um, exactly. but the fact that any of this is happening at all, it's just. It's time to clean house. You know, um, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, they're one and the same in that regard. We can't say one party is one way and the other is not. Uh, The elite are beyond parties. The elite control the show. I mean, people from Wall Street laughed at things Bernie Sanders said. They're basically saying, well, if he becomes president, they said this a while ago, once he's president, he'll learn, you know, he's got to negotiate with us because nothing's going to happen without us. Yeah. And, you know, and by, and by not the way it should be. any kind of bipartisanship has seemed, you know, even almost impossible during the uh, the Obama administration with a Republican, largely Republican Congress. But, right. you know, I mean, this this election to me seems really unique in that, uh, you know, the next question I want to want to get to is, you know, whether or not uh, I mean, this may seem like a ridiculous question to you, but do you feel that Donald Trump represents American values? Okay, that's a that's a that's a loaded question. <laughs> question because he may and and probably does represent a very small proportion of American values. But uh, here's the thing: when it comes to voting for Trump, there are many different reasons why people, I think, are considering voting for Trump. Uh, one is they don't like Hillary, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there are a lot of GOP people that just can't stand Hillary, and a lot of that comes from the party itself bashing the Democratic side just to encourage people to continue to vote for them, which keeps this whole money in politics thing fed over and over again. I think that the American people are being fooled. I think for them to think there's a big difference between these parties is foolish. Mm -hmm. And I think that these parties have colluded to um, put them against each other, because as long as we're against each other, we can't come together 
to have the government that we want. So they keep us divided. So some people want to vote for Trump because they're against Hillary. And I think a lot of those ideas have been placed in their head um, to think that, you know, one side's good and the other side is not so good. There are other people that want to vote for Trump, I think, because they actually believe in some of these very, I'll just be frank, trashy things he stands for. Um, You know, racism and being against immigration and, and just, you know, ideas that frankly can lead to civil war right so there are people that think that way uh and then there are other people like myself i'm not (laughs) i would never vote for trump i don't want to vote for hillary either i'm going jill stein but um here's the thing once you see how the system works once you pay close attention and you sort through facts you see how the system works, and you realize this two-party system is the problem, that we can't win. This two-party system keeps us divided, and we have no say. Mm-hmm. We, our votes don't even count anymore. All of the control comes from the elite. We have no power anymore. Once you realize that, then you know we have to get a third party going. There is no other way to break this up. There's no other way to stop it. Bernie Sanders agrees his entire life he's advocated for a third party. He has always been an independent independent for that reason. And we know that a third party is required. In order for a third party to be required, that means at this point in time we need to vote Jill Stein. Some people want to write Bernie in just in certain states, not because they believe he can win, because obviously he can't at this point, because he can't be written in in a lot of states, but to bust up the 270 electoral votes required for either Hillary or Trump to win. So they need 270 to win. If we can have an, enough third-party votes out there, enough wins, yeah. uh, electoral votes, then we can stop that from happening. And then what happens is the third party with the most votes becomes eligible for the presidency, which still might be a long shot because people in the House each get one vote and they decide. And that House is dominated by the GOP at the moment. So they might choose Trump anyway. But I am willing to take a risk. I am willing to vote for Jill Stein, seeing the, the broader picture, looking ahead into the future, knowing we have to break up a two-party system, even if that means a demagogue, narcissistic, narcissistic, crazy person like Trump may be elected for four years. I am willing to take that chance because I think democracy is more important and that if we don't, it will never get done. Right. And that we have to stop this two-party against each other yeah. system controlled by the elite. It's just a game to them. Yeah. And, you know, obviously so. Bernie was, was, was a more than viable candidate uh, in this particular election. And, you know, I mean, to some extent, I, this leads me to the next point is that, uh, you know, does the Republican Party itself, uh, in lieu of this, this particular election, seem like it's in jeopardy? I believe and hope and pray that the entire political system in the United States is in jeopardy so long as Americans wake up and come together. And we have to stop having this division between the two parties. And I believe that is happening. So not both parties are at risk right now. I'm, you know, I've been on the Democratic side because I, my, I have leanings towards that way, even though I don't believe for a moment that politics in America in the current day is represented by ideologies in these parties. They're not. They represent the elite. So there's no point in us even joining a party anymore. But my leanings in the past, when I wasn't this awake, were for the Democratic Party. So I've been paying close, more close attention to that side of things, and I really believe very strongly that the Democratic Party is never, ever, ever going to be what it was, that we are busting it up, and most people are awake, and that is going to happen. And so the question is the GOP side, is that going to happen on that side too? Um, You know, I think it has to. I think it has to because they don't like Trump. They don't want Trump. And being the sort of um, demagogue, narcissistic person that he is and a bit of a, you know, he kind of a goon. He kind of makes things up on the fly. He doesn't really know what he's doing. I mean, it's, it's a joke. This person is actually even running. But I think if he gets in, um, you know, he's he's sort of a, an independent, I guess, if you will. And, and he will bust some of that up on, on his side as well. But I hope we're all smart enough to know that whatever happens in this election, we need to prepare ourselves for 2020. And what right. that means is having a third party that represents us so we can stop both sides from, from playing with the American people. Yeah, and I mean, in all of this, you know, there's a to a large extent, there's a question, uh, you know, what what sort of role is the media playing in this election? I mean, it seems to be a, 
I don't know if it's it's uh, had more publicity than than any other election, but it seems to be uh, really igniting uh, a lot of people on That's opposite right. sides and and uh, people from all walks of life. And I, I mean, do you right. think that the media is is consciously manipulating yes. this election? Oh gosh, yes. If you go to again, if you go to trustvote.org, where there's a lawsuit pending based upon you know due to election fraud that's been taking place. The lawsuit that is pending, um, they decided to file the lawsuit, even though it's taking place obviously across the country, they decided to file the lawsuit in Ohio. The reason they chose Ohio is because it has these racketeering laws that are very strong. And the racketeering um, charges that are being put in place here are indicating that CNN, MSNBC, Clinton Foundation, and uh, the Democratic Party and certain elites and part, certain people in the GOP, which are the elite running both the show, actually. I think we lost you, hon. Speaking with... Are you there? Yeah, I thought we lost you there. Just lost your Yeah, lost something your signal. happened there. I'm, I apologize. I'm not sure what happened there. That's okay. Uh, you can carry on. Um, I yeah. Can... So where I stopped was yeah. So the yeah. I apologize. Sure in Ohio, happened. we were talking about Ohio. Here. Yep. But the racketeering charges. So the racketeering charges that are being implemented currently for the election fraud are due to collusion between the mainstream media, specifically CNN and MSNBC, right. with um, very specific people um, that are in the are considered elite, the, the top one percent, who own these stations and have a huge say in the you know ongoings in, in both political parties so there are you can go to trustvote.org to learn about that and it has been quite obvious as i said earlier that the media is um colluding with these political parties to swing the vote when we look at discrepancies between what we video as just average people and the things that we see and the things that we do versus what is covered on mainstream media. As an example, with all the election fraud that happened this election, particularly in Arizona, Nevada, and other places, people were so upset. They protested. Thousands and thousands of people showed up, and these these things weren't even covered on the mainstream media. They didn't cover these massive stories. There were there were 6,000 people outside of CNN protesting against CNN for not covering yeah. their protests. Absolutely. And CNN, of course, didn't even cover the protest of them. So mm-hmm. it becomes quite obvious with socialized media what, you know, what their game plan is yeah. just based upon what they choose to show and what they choose not to show. Exactly. And and that leads me now to my final question. And I mean, this, this may seem like a... Uh, kind of a loaded question and and you know we've covered this already quite extensively but obviously it's important that the, for the future of America uh that younger generations participate in the electoral process and I'm sure that you agree with that how important do you think it is really for for them to get out to the polls and make their voices heard Right. The reason it is dire in this election is because if we've learned anything from poll after poll after poll, it's, you know, it's not rocket science. We know that the millennials can absolutely swing the election and the millennials are the ones who believe in the necessity of a third party. The millennials, 90 plus percent wanted Bernie Sanders. They are the ones that are required to bust the system up. They are the ones that are required to vote for any third party they wish. Um, if we could all come together and stick with one, it helps us get, if we get at least, if any third party, okay, any third party, Libertarian, Green Party, whatever, if any third party gets at least 5% of electoral votes, they end up getting uh, $10 million plus dollars and whatnot for the next election, and they become uh, a very strong um, presence in 2020 with a good probability of whoever's leading the party at that time to get elected, whether we decide that might be Bernie Sanders or we decide that might be Jill Stein or whoever we want it to be. Um, any third party uh, needs to have a, a good chunk of the vote during this election. We don't have to win. We just need a big enough chunk to make a difference in 2020. And the younger generation are necessary to do that because they are the ones that believe that and feel that way. So we hope they get out and they vote for any third party they want. Excellent. Thank you. And today we've been talking to Lori Sesnick, Ph.D., Harvard University. Um, Are you a neuroscientist, am I correct? Right. Yes. And you're also one of the uh, 
founders of the uh, Occupy DNC movement. Right. And uh, yeah. I, I appreciate you talking with me today, Lori. Um, Thank you. And uh, hopefully this message will get out loud and clear to the, so. to the millennials. So. Thanks. Thanks for. Thank uh, you so much. Thanks for sharing your time, Lori. And we'll talk again. Okay, thanks.